Hello darling hearts, how are you doing? It's your GAPS coach Emma here, Timeless Cookery. I woke up at four o'clock this morning and some teenager had left a packet of crumpets by the toaster and I was quite hungry and it was just full moon. Was, are you feeling the full moon? I'm a bit like, I feel really wired, you know. Anyway, these crumpets were there and I just could not resist. I just whacked them in the toaster and I put on a cuppa and a cup of rooibos and I smothered the crumpets in a layer of butter about that fat and then put honey on them. And oh my God, the taste sensation. You know, like this is specially designed to be especially Moorish and addictive, may I say even, addictive, because we all know that um, the grains, especially wheat, resembles, when it's maldigested, the proteins resemble an opioid. So it really is like you can get totally hooked on something that resembles heroin or, or um, morphine. You know, it's an opioid. Anyway, so I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I enjoyed every single little morsel. And, you know, 10 years ago, that would have bloated me like a balloon, made me really farty, probably given me constipation, and I would have been just really cranky and irritable. But actually, I just went and listened to a podcast and fell fast back to sleep again. <laughs> so I was like, cool. I've healed enough that I can handle some of the slave food. Look at all the rays of sunshine going towards it. Ooh, ah, crumpets. It's like slave food, slave food. It's very enticing. You know, the devil will, you know, anything evil, anything anti-life, anything that sort of diminishes life rather than building life will look ever so enticing. Will look ever so, come, eat me, you know. But you have to watch out. But sometimes you have to let the kids find out the hard way and you have to let the kids eat the rubbish. But that only works, that trick, if you've managed to stay junk free for a little while. And then you go, yeah, okay, go on, have a blowout, have it. And then they eat it and then they're just like, wah, 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 and then they feel so rubbish the next day. It's like, and then you don't have to say anything. <laughs> You don't have to do anything, you just let them find out the hard way. You know, this is some of my tactics that I'm wanting to share on my kids. Hyper Kids Boot Camp I'm going to do this summer. Like, don't care if you're going camping, don't care if you're going on holiday. I'm going to do eight live group calls and then give you support to use the summer holidays to actually go right there with me. So if you're sort of dreading, if you're a bit like, oh my God, my kids are so hyper and like this really is full moon at the moment. So you'll notice if they're a bit unhinged, you know, um, if you're thinking, God, it's summer holidays and I've got the whole of the summer holidays with the kids and I don't know how I'm going to cope with it because I'm a bit bad tempered and short tempered and impatient and not feeling great. And the kids are bouncing off the walls and what are we going to do all summer? Do some cooking with me, with Timeless Cookery, you know, and um, try and help them to balance out their blood sugar and try to avoid the opiates of the masses, the slave foods. Slave foods. I shouldn't be advertising for them. <clears throat> it was divine. It was delicious, you know. Hi, Dean. Hi, Diana. Um, but don't go there. Just don't go. I mean, if you do go there, like, you know, straight back on the horse. You fall off the horse, you fall off the wagon, whatever. You just get straight back up and keep riding. You know, keep riding. <laughs> I'm feeling so excited and amazing at the moment. I know it's full moon and a lot of people are suffering because they're like, I don't know what's going on with them. But I feel I'm pretty amazing. And I just wanted to share some news. My puppies, my, my dogs are having puppies by accident. Even though I had, ball, I had um, Jack's balls taken off, they managed to sneak away before that actually happened. And my puppy, my dog Trilby, who's quite old now, actually. She's like seven and a half or eight even. Just quite old for having puppies. But she's already had two litters, so she'll know what she's doing. But she's swelling, you know, and it's messed up all my plans for summer. I've had to cancel one of my retreats and move the people to a another time anyway ratter jack and ratter jill are my two jack russells that's their you know posh if i was going to crofts name you know um because they're pure breed jack russells one's a uh, long legged short hair shiny pelt and the other one's like a scruffy rag muffin short legged black and tan um you know ruffian um but he's much more cuddly since he's had his balls off and i was thinking you know he's much more cuddly and more approachable and lovely but um, you know, I was thinking about how he was, because he used to posture when he had his balls, you know, when he had his testosterone or whatever it is that flies around a dog's body. He was um, really posturing when he met other dogs and he was really like, ag not aggressive, but he was like, I'm protecting the females. And, you know, and I was thinking, that's what men are supposed to be like. That's what the male of the species is supposed to be like. A little bit, you know, peacockish and, you know, feeling fine and showing their muscles and, you know, 
um, going I sh and opening the door and saying, "I should look after you. I'll carry you over there. You know, whatever." And it, and it's the and it's the female role to um, nurture, bring anything that the the the, the man brings. We multiply it and we grow it and we do something fancy with it and put a cherry on top and then go there you go darling you know we're we're giving we're giving and giving and transmuting and transforming and the men are coming with that like power energy you know anyway i'm very happy that jack that jack jack my little dog has now um he's much more cuddly now he's but now he's had his balls off but anyway I'm, I'm having puppies and jack and jill so i was thinking about jack and jill i was thinking about the um nursery rhymes right I've had these nursery rhymes flying around my head for ages and I'm like, what's the meaning? What's the significance of like, and I had a brainwave about Jack Spratt. I don't know if you remember this one. Jack Spratt could eat no fat and his wife could eat no lean. And so between them both, you see, they licked the platter clean. And there would always be an image of like a really skinny man and a really fat woman, like a one and a zero, um, which is actually that principle. You know, the, the phallus, the one, and the zero is the whole, the, 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 the thing that holds or the on switch or anyway you put them together and it's like on off switch <laughs> anyway a um, bit of symbology there for you anyway jack spratt could eat no fat his wife could eat no and, and all of the nursery rhyme books all of the illustrations in the books um showed this really skinny guy and this really fat woman like a um polarity of like you know he only ate he couldn't eat fat and she couldn't eat lean and so she ate all the fat and he ate all the lean and that's why he's skinny and she's fat implying fat makes you fat which is so wrong but what we need to do is amalgamate those two sides of ourselves the masculine and the feminine the man and the woman in us you know the masculine and the feminine and eat lots of fat with your protein basically <laughs> that's how it works you don't want to eat lean meat and you don't want to eat just fat. You want to eat the fat and the protein together. So that's what that nursery rhyme's about. Jack Spratt could eat no fat, his wife could eat no lean. So between the both, you see, they licked the platter clean and they became whole <laughs> when they, they got the balance right, yeah? And the other one I was thinking about, which I'd spoke about before a little bit, was Jack and Jill, which is my dogs. That's their names, Ratter Jack and Ratter Jill. Um, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water and Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Up Jack got. And home did trot as fast as he could caper. He went to bed to mend his head with vinegar and brown paper. Right, that's the rhyme, right? The, 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 you know, the, the, these rhymes are, are told us for a reason, you know, but we've got to kind of decipher the riddles in them um, and work out what the hell they're talking about. And I think what they're talking about with the vinegar and brown paper is uh, DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide, which is an amazing, um, substance that is a byproduct of the wood pulp um, paper making industry and um, this substance uh, when we use it topically can help us draw things into the body so you have to be careful because if you've just been touching acetone or something toxic it will draw that into your body but if you're using it on clean skin um, you can then use it with magnesium to get magnesium further into the tissues or some a topical medicine to get it further into the tissues. Iodine, for instance, um, which is not a medicine. It's, it's a, an element on the periodic table, which we all need. In, you know, we all need iodine, Lugol's iodine. If you, if, you, if you haven't got any Lugol's iodine, go and order some, right? And then paint it on your skin. That's what we do. We, d we don't take it orally because that interferes with culturing and cultivating the garden of your microbiome on gaps anyway. So yeah, there was a story in Jack and Jill. And then, I mean, and then there's, there's the, house that, the house that Jack built. Uh, this is the cock that crowed in the morn that woke the pastor, mm -hmm, Shaven and Sean, um, who married the man, no, who, who, I can't remember, who kicked the cow, no, who, the cow with the crumpled horn who kicked the cat who ate the rat that, lay in the house that Jack built. I can't remember it, but I'm going to find out about it and um, work out what that little riddle is all about. I think all of these Jack references, who is this Jack? Who is this mysterious Jack in all the nursery rhymes? I do think that it is um, Janice. Go and check out What the Flock TV and look at the two-faced God. Do you ever see that scene in Harry Potter where one of the, the, the guys takes his turban off, one of the teachers takes his, he's the simpering one, the, the weak, weakling one, and he takes off his turban and he's got like a head on the back of his head like it's double headed double faced two faced like the happy and the sad um 
masks that are the symbols of the entertainment industry that I worked for for 10 years. How miserable as sin I was in that work. You know, when I first saw that scene in Harry Potter, I just went, <gasps> it really freaked me out. It gave me a really funny feeling in my tummy. I'm not very good with horror. And I'm glad to say I'm not very good with horror. It's not great having horror images in your mind's eye. What we need in our mind's eye is the most beautiful, kind of like balanced, funky, interesting, posturing men. <laughs> I don't know, all good things that you want to see. And, you know, we're so easily distracted by the weapons of mass distraction. Um, and now, full moon is a perfect time to visualise your best possible outcomes. What do you see? What do you want to see? What do you want to see happen? Where do you want to be next month, this time next month, this time next year? Where do you want to be in three years? Where do you want to be in five years? I want to be, I want to see a whole load of cottage hospitals. I want to see gaps, meals on wheels, <laughs> delivery service. Wouldn't that be fun? Um, yes, yeah, so many fabulous um, concepts and ideas. So focus on that which you would see come true. Ignore the rest right? Because they're just using your mind to create the reality. They're using you to imagine all the horrible 15 minutes of these. Don't, 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 don't go there, right? They're, they're, we've got so many tricks up our sleeve to deal with all of that nonsense. Come and hang out in Timeless Cookery Club. We can talk about all this stuff. Hi, Emma. Hi, Megan. Um, tell anyone who's struggling with hyper kids, that I'm doing a hyper kids boot camp, right? Where we're going to hang out every week for an hour on zoom in a group. And we're going to brainstorm with all the other mothers. And I've got the answers because I've been there. I've done the stealth health thing. I've had the kids throwing tantrums on the floor of the supermarket and all the other people staring at you like you're mad. I've had the other mothers shunning me because I'm like, no, we don't eat pizza. No, we don't eat croissants. No, we don't eat biscuits. No, we don't eat grains. I've, I've been there. I've done it, you know, and I feel great. And the kids are balanced as well as they can be considering all of the toxins out there. It's the glyphosate and the other pesticides and herbicides on the grains that we have to worry about. But I got loads of alternatives instead of bread on the GAPS app. Um, so see me at timelesscookery.com and tell your mates if they need some help over the summer holidays. Because the summer holidays is perfect. It's when the kids are at home. The kids are home. And if you're dreading that idea, then let's get to work. You know, because when you start to use the food as the medicine, everything changes. The demeanor changes. The behavior changes. The mood changes. I've been talking about lactobacillus salivarius, lactobacillus reuteri. People report when they're having those yogurt cultures for a few months, they start to want to go out and talk to people. They start to want to be more sociable. They start to uh, wake up with a boner in the morning instead of like, thinking, oh God, do I have to get out of bed again? Is this another day? This is gut bugs we're talking about here. So look after your gut and your brain will be sharp and you'll be able to create the reality. That's what I'm saying anyway. Darling hearts, Lots and lots of love to you. Go and decipher some more um, um, nursery rhymes. It's so fascinating. I think there's, there's messaging even in the, in the nursery rhymes. It's so interesting. Anyway, lots of love to you. And um, yeah, have a beautiful day. Have a good full moon. I hope you're okay. It does make some people go a bit lunatic. Loon, the moon in French, that is. Yeah, lots of love. All be well.